Joining us now is Dr. Nancy Rowe, Associate Professor of Medicine at the University of Chicago Medical Center. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for asking me to be here. It's good to have you. Um, your symposium is on HCV, which seems to be the hot topic of this year's meeting, especially all the new treatments. Give us a brief overview of what's going to be covered. Hepatitis C is absolutely the hot topic for, for the liver week. Um, this is a special interest group directed symposia. So as you're aware, the ASLD does have a number of special interest groups, and we have the wonderful opportunity of putting together what, what we feel, the, you know, the group with the most hepatitis C interest, per se, the most motivated to go to the interest group, um, a program that we think um, translates to real-time issues in hepatitis C. And so that's what our hepatitis C symposium is about. Why do you think all these potential therapies are coming out now? Well, I would imagine that because we've been battling with less than effective therapies with a lot of side effects for so many years, there's been a huge exposure or a huge interest for a long time in developing um, better hepatitis C treatment. And what I don't why the timing for all these agents happens to be almost, I, you know, overlapping right. is a little inconvenient if you're in industry. But from a hepatitis C therapeutic standpoint, it's a wonderful marriage with the CDC's recommendations for screening the birth cohort. So at the same time, we're identifying a huge group of individuals that were previously undiagnosed. We have the ability to tell them that now is a wonderful time to have hepatitis C. We have agents <laughs> coming that will be curative, have less toxicity, shortened duration. Um, the only difficulty with this is that these patients that are going to get this have no idea the historical context of what they're missing. So when you try to tell them how lucky they are to have hep C and get these things, they look at you a little bit <laughs> quizzically like you're... It's only because we have so much history in using agents that were difficult to use in patients that had lower efficacy. So will doctors have any challenges, you think, in terms of uh, blending this into their practice? So that that with any new therapy there is always challenges and we can look at HIV a little bit to understand this. Mm. Understanding how to combine agents that may not have been used in clinical trials is going to be a challenge. Getting access to those um, agents whether it's just getting them off label or getting them paid for mm -hmm. or getting them for groups of individuals that don't have the means to afford them. Um, linking hepatitis positive patients with someone who's willing to provide care for them. These are all hurdles that, you know, since hep C therapy is going to be so easy, we, we have some new things to concentrate on, job security. <laughs> well, that's an interesting thing to have to concentrate on. <laughs> you always want to have something positive. Finding patients and giving them therapy is, is certainly a lot better than trying to, um, you know, use agents that have toxicity. It sounds like there's exciting uh, things that you'll be going through in this session. I think so, and the speakers are excellent speakers. Um, they didn't get to pick their topics, but we hope that we've found good topics for them, looking at responsible use of direct-acting antivirals, covering um, what's close to approval, if not in the process of approval, as well as the next waves of therapy, so phase three registration trials, the phase two data, and then um, a lot of, of the epidemiology and overview. So we, we hope we're putting on a good program. Sounds terrific. Thank you so much for joining us. Oh, thanks for inviting me again. <laughs>